Joining me right now is the Coalition to Protect American Workers Executive Director. He is the former Chief of Staff to Vice President Pence, Mark Short. Mark, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. So the president tried to release oil from the strategic oil reserve before, and when he did so, oil prices actually traded up. And now we are above that level of before he released oil from the reserves. What is your take on this latest move to release more oil from the strategic oil reserve? Will it work to get gasoline prices lower? Well, Maria, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is there for national emergencies. And this is a crisis of the president's own making in partnership with the radical environmentalists and the Democrat Party today and the relentless war on producing oil and gas domestically. The reality is it was only a couple years ago under the Trump-Pence administration that America was exporting more oil than it was importing for the first time in 75 years. We've totally reversed those policies. And so I think that this temporary relief is not going to be long-lasting. The, the international supply and demand is in such a place that prices are going to continue to rise. And so it's a clear attempt by the Biden administration to try to flail and deflect. But think about this for a second, Maria. A million barrels a day, we basically consume about 20 million barrels a day, so about 5 percent. The reality is that the projections for Keystone Pipeline is we would have been importing just under a million barrels a day from Canada's tar sands. So his cancellation of the Keystone Pipeline actually is only being offset here by tapping into the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And if he actually does this for the days he said, up to 180 days, we'll have the lowest reserves we've had since the 1980s. This is a crisis of the administration's own making. Yeah, but Mark, you know that the president doesn't see many options, because if he were to unleash the energy that is so prevalent here in America, that would deem his climate change agenda a failure. And we know that the climate change agenda is everywhere, and that is the priority for this administration. Let's not forget what happened at the Securities and Exchange Commission last week. A new rule from the SEC that would require all publicly traded companies to report information on greenhouse gas emissions and risks related to climate change. That means all public traded companies to make regular reports on climate change, which will mean much higher costs for those companies. I spoke with the former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission yesterday, Harvey Pitt, and he reacted to these new rules. Take a listen. For the SEC to require affirmative disclosures about carbon emissions and apply a one-size-fits-all to all companies about that, I think is going to sorely test the ability of the SEC to gain credibility for rules that are clearly and undoubtedly within its authority. Mark, your reaction. Maria, this is a shocking rule by the SEC, and it's something that's gotten far too little attention in national coverage. And it continues, as you said, the relentless war on domestic production of oil and gas. And what it's also led to is a lot of these environmental, social governance programs, ESG programs, is it's led to less investment. So when the Biden administration um, demeans and says we need more production here domestically, all they're doing is driving investment away with rules of this nature. And there's a national emergency yeah. component to this, too, or a national security component, too, Maria, because as they continue, as Mayor Pete tells Americans that every American should just buy an electric vehicle as he's sitting there being driven around at taxpayer expense by government drivers on government vehicles, the reality is that 80 percent of electric vehicle batteries are manufactured in China, and 95 percent of rare earth materials used for electric vehicles are harvested in communist China and Russia. So their policies are yeah. only pushing us to become more dependent upon our nation's greatest adversaries, as opposed to simply harvesting the natural resources that God placed here in America that the Trump-Pence administration, again, produced to a point just a few years ago that we became energy independent and actually net exporters for the first time in 75 years. Yeah. Well, look, don't forget that uh, Pete Buttigieg had his bike in that SUV, okay? So, yes, he was driven a, a block away from the White House, but then he took out his bike, and he rode his bike for the last block. Dagan McDowell, jump in here. 
Mark, our domestic energy policy is inextricably linked to our foreign policy. Our power here is power on the world stage. And what about Joe Biden's mishandling of our relationship with Saudi Arabia at a time when the world needs more oil, oil from Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and um, just to offset the oil that is not coming out of Russia right now, the United States, because of Biden, turned our backs on Saudi Arabia. And now Saudi Arabia is looking to China and talking about accepting the yuan for payment of oil. Dagan, you're exactly right. These are interlinked. The reality is what you see is the Biden administration rather relying upon American oil and create American jobs as they're going hat in hand to a dictator in Venezuela asking for help or the mullahs in Iran. And also they began on the wrong foot with Saudi Arabia when the Houthis have continued to attack Saudi Arabia even this past weekend again, launching bombs and attacking facilities there for oil production. The reality is the Houthis were on the terrorist uh, list of nations by the Trump-Pence administration. One of the first things the Biden administration did is they took them off, which, which certainly irritated and angered the Saudi Arabians. And now you have them looking forward to an Iran nuclear deal in which they're looking to take IRCG off the list of national terrorist groups, which only, again, further irritates our partners in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly right, Degan. These are interlinked. And the reality is that what this administration is doing is they're going to our adversaries to say, please help us, rather than just going ahead and stopping their continual war on fossil fuel in America, where we're actually able to create American jobs. Yeah, and, and you hadn't heard a peep out of this administration about those attacks on the Saudis, on uh, the United Arab Emirates from the Houthis, which are backed by the Iranians. We also don't have any information about this Iran deal that they are negotiating right now that apparently we're just days away from rejoining. Uh, we hear a lot of information about what he's going to do or not do on Russia, but no information about the Iran deal uh, with Russia negotiating on the U.S.'s behalf. Mark, it's good to see you as always. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Thanks, Maria.